Hey everybody, we're trying something new this month. Uh, we're starting a couple parallel series. One of them is going to be a pathway for you to learn about Final Cut Pro uh, as audio engineers, as someone who may use Logic Pro. You may have already bought Final Cut as part of a bundle, uh, or you may just be interested in doing that on the on the forums, on Reddit, on Facebook. I see all the time people talking about, you know, should I get the new Mac Ultra, Mac Studio Ultra? Uh, maybe because, you know, if you want to start doing video editing. Uh, and so I hear a lot of uh, people using Logic thinking, you know, maybe they're going to be doing some video down the road. And so what I want to do is create a pathway into using Final Cut. The first few videos are going to be covering some of the real key issues uh, that you might want to know as a, as a someone with a music or audio background. Uh, and then we'll start at the beginning of using this software. And hopefully over time, this will be a really useful uh, series for you. The other series we're going to start, you'll learn more about later, is uh, how to earn money using Logic. That's something that I think a lot of people might be interested in that uh, is talked about, but not enough. And uh, a lot of people feel like it should be easier to, to perhaps turn your, some of your skills into an actual career. Uh, so that'll be a different series, but right now we're going to start with this. Um, I've been using Final Cut for a long time, almost as long as uh, Logic itself. Uh, and so I think that I've seen a lot of the progression uh, back in the old days before we went to the new version of Final Cut, uh, back when it was more widely used and then uh, really had some speed bumps in design. And now I think it's a, a very awesome piece of software and it's perfect for those of us who come from a more audio or music background because it does some of the stuff for us that perhaps uh, a video editor or, you know, director, producer, editor might have some additional skills that, um, that we don't have because we came from a different background. The first thing you'll notice jumping into Final Cut is how different the audio is treated. Half the time audio clips are attached to video clips. Uh, so for instance, if I move, you know, one of these around, you'll see the audio down below moves with it. Uh, there are some that can be free floating, uh, but for the most part, it's a very different system. And um, because of this, this way of working, it's going to be confusing for you sometimes. Uh, to, if, for instance, you want to put an equalizer across what we would call in logic an entire track, uh, you won't be able to do that so in such a straightforward way here in Final Cut because. Uh, even though we have these things that are lanes right here, I actually had to turn those on. So we have audio lanes right there. I can actually turn them off so they just float. Um, or we can show audio lanes. And then we'll have a little bit of stuff here that, that helps with that. Um, so the real technique I want to showcase today is just explaining a key concept that is so different from Logic but is a, a really important concept. So that concept is, and let me click on one of these audio files, over here in my inspector, my properties area, uh, we'll have a few different options here. And maybe this isn't visible um, on yours if you have this open, but this is the, the button we can use to open this. And under the audio, which is the little speaker, if I have something selected, it'll show up here as an audio file. And if I scrub on it, it'll also essentially solo out uh, the video that's attached to it. But um, there's two little menus that are attached here. The first one is, do we want this to be dual mono, stereo, or reverse stereo? And then the second one sets what's called the roll. And we can edit these rolls if you want to do more. Uh, you can actually do uh, different colors for these, etc. cetera. Um, and we have some video rolls as well, but we're just going to be dealing with the audio roll. So I have this dialogue uh, voiceover track. I think this is actually just uh, the recorded narration at the same time I did the video. But some of this would be um, voiceover, which is uh, recorded separately from 
a video recorder. And so now I've got that one here selected. And it's, it's selected to dialogue. These were the default. Um, however, we could just go through and, and change these and make them, you know, into one thing. Let's expand this out. And in this case, we can't actually delete these because they're used uh, for various purposes with the auto assignment. Um, but certainly we could add some additional ones of our own if we wanted to. Same for effects and music. Now, when I first came into the project today, these were all blue, The these three bottom ones. That means the music were selected as dialogue, uh, and I just had to switch them out to the music one. So now all three of the music cues are set up under the music sub-role. Now, what's the whole point of this? I mean, what, why do we need to do this? This is essentially like saying, let's put these on a track, um, because the way that these work are later on when we do exporting, and also if we want to add uh, effects to the entire thing, uh, then these sub roles become really important. So say that we have our edit pretty much done, or someone sends us an edit, and we're working on it in Final Cut to do some sound design or add some music. Uh, they could send it to Logic so we could work in there, but sometimes, in cases like this particular project, there's three musical cues and kind of a, a back and forth between dialogue captured with the camera and then some voiceover. But it's really simple. I mean, there's not a ton of options. I've turned down some of the things in terms of the sound, but that's it. So not too much. Split them out by the sub roles. And then if I want to add effects to everything, I have to do it in one of a few different ways. If I want, I could come through with the channel EQ and put it on one of these clips and then Command C to copy that. And then I can go to the other one and say, you know what, I want to paste uh, attributes. And then you can see I can come through here and say, you know what, I don't want to do all of the attributes. I just want to do the channel EQ. And then I can paste it. So then I get that EQ effect on each of the different clips. That's one way. Let's go back to this first one. And up here in the same place as where we did the rolls, you'll see the EQ. You'll see it looks just like the Logic EQ because it is. Um, so you're having a, a hand up anyway of this. Let's undo that. Didn't want to delete it. There we go. Just delete that one effect. So that's one way. Put it on one clip, paste it to the other ones. Perfect. Uh, another thing I can do is come through to these three clips. I can right click and say new compound clip. And now all of those are into one clip and I can put a channel EQ there and uh, it'll apply to all of the music then. I can always, with a compound clip, it's just like a folder, double click on it, open it up and continue editing. And then use my little arrow here to come back out. I can, of course, as well, uh, say break apart clip items and then they go back to the original. So that's another way. The last way is to do a compound clip of everything on our timeline here new compound clip. Say that I'm already pretty much done with the video, right? Now with this, you'll see I've got the blue clip below and a green clip. The blue one is all of my voiceover or dialogue, and then the green one is all the music. Now that didn't just pop up uh, in a default situation. Because I've already viewed it this way, it showed up. Uh, but you may need to come in here uh, and uh, do one of the choices to expand uh, all the different components of your compound clip. And so that's a, a nice thing we can do here. I don't think we have anything else up here that applies to this. Okay, cool. So now I can easily throw on uh, some sort of channel EQ or a limiter or a compressor or maybe a slight amount of reverb or whatever on my audio and 
uh, my dialogue rather, and then I could do a little bit of EQ and compression or limiting and a little bit of reverb on my overall music track. Now, is that going to really fit the entire track? I don't know. In this case, it's all one similar sound, and so I could do that, um, but I could just put a limiter to make sure it stays in the right level. And then with the, uh, the dialogue, just to make sure that there's nothing that's too soft or too loud, I could do a similar thing. So this is a really great way. I can always, of course, double click on this and come in. However, if you go into the compound clip, those effects that you've added on the compound clip on the outside are deactivated. You're going in and listening without it. The minute you come back out, you'll hear it again with those on it. If this sounds overly complex and nothing like you're used to, that's because it's true. Does that make it wrong? Of course not. Does it uh, useful to know how you can do things in Final Cut without having to go into logic? Yes, because uh, there you, if you want to work in video, sometimes the best way is just to open up the Final Cut library and, and work on it directly there instead of going into logic and then changing some things and going back from logic into Final Cut. Uh, sometimes it makes sense to do it directly here on your actual timeline. Okay, so this has been a look at that. A look at how to use compound clips uh, to add effects to all of the different components of audio as assigned by the various roles. Uh, and so that's why this is important. Uh, and it's important first step in understanding how you might be able to use Final Cut. Okay, if this was useful, please let me know in the comments if this is something you want more of learning how to think like a video editor while capitalizing on your Logic Pro skills, then let me know. If this is something that you have no interest in at all, then um, let me know that as well, because it, it's YouTube, you know? It's like we're going to be doing stuff that uh, tries to reach the biggest number of people. On one hand, on the other hand, uh, if we reach a small group that's really interested, that that's okay too. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this, and um, more videos soon.